wonder who And we just don't care If your love for me Isn't all that strong Honey, tell me why When you say goodbye Can't you just stay gone It used to break my heart Every time you leave Made me want to cry Moan, beg you, please Now I just can't let This hurt go on Honey, tell me why When you say goodbye Can't you just stay gone It used to break my heart Every time you'd leave Made me want to cry Moan, beg you, please With Dan Miller, this is Mike Bohan. Tonight, best-selling author H. Jackson Brown. Plus, Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris from the country group Zimmeron. Now, here's Dan Miller. Good show here tonight. Uh, Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris, two members of the country group Cimarron, will be joining us later. They've been together for 13 years, which I find amazing. A group that's together for 13 years. That is amazing. Yeah. When you left last night, I had to walk the floor. Knowing you'd come back again, it hurt me more. You know it just ain't right the way you do me wrong. Honey, tell me why when you say goodbye, can't you just stay gone? It used to break my heart every time you leave. Made me want to cry, moan, beg, and plead. Now I just can't let this hurt go on. Honey, tell me why when you say goodbye, can't you just stay gone? Was it? All right, we're back. Our guest this time, Bobby Smith, on your left, now, <laughs> and, and Jerry Paris of the group Cimarron, one-third of the group, country group Cimarron, whose most recent album on Alpine Label is called Cimarron, and the video you just saw a little bit of there is called Can't You Just Stay Gone. Guys, nice to have you here. Thank Good to be here. And Thank that's you. your very first video, right? Sure is. That's a, uh, hopefully one of many, but yeah, yeah that's the first so. one. Uh, it's amazing. You've been, been here 30, 13, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I tell you, they look I awful hold, young. <laughs> I hold my age well. <laughs> but but uh, so it, is that the only one you've shot, or have you done another video that will come out eventually? No, that's the only one we've shot right now. There are talk, we're talking about doing another one real soon, but that's yeah. the only one that's been completed at the moment. You mentioned it was very cold the, oh, the, the cold, night you did oh, that. Oh, cold, yes. Here cold. in Nashville? Yes, it was. It was actually at a, a salvage yard here at h and Salvage Yard, a local place around here. But it was chilly. It was like 30 or 29 degrees that night. We were freezing, <laughs> except but, for Bob. He was not. Now, if, if you'd been playing live, that would have been a problem for your instruments staying in tune. Mm -hmm. yeah, they never yeah. stayed in tune. We've been tuning after every song. <laughs> I hated to hear what it actually sounded like, because we were playing to it, you know, but it... <laughs> <laughs> just, just hitting the string. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they set up big speakers so you can hear the, the, the video, hear the song, and then yeah. you just... And you, big you, speakers you, and you just pantomime right along with it. Just how loud do they have those speakers? Pretty loud. Are they? Pretty loud, yeah. It's like a PA almost. Yeah. Almost. And this is getting played now on CMT and TNN. TNN it's yeah. got to be very exciting. It is really exciting. It's, uh, it's like uh, I told somebody before in one of the interviews, like being in Hollywood on the set, you know. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Do you remember, the, when, was, when did it first get on, one of the, or either here on TNN or on CMT, do you know? I think it was debuted, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, one of the video shows, either Video Morning. If, video Morning. Video Morning debuted it, so that would, you know, be on TNN is what it was. Did, we did had you TNN see it the first time it ran? Uh, I, yeah, actually we did. As a matter of fact, the actual full time that it ran was when we were on Video Morning, when yeah. we had, were guests on it that morning, and they played it, if I'm not mistaken, that was the debut. But, you, but it's got to be quite a thrill if you're sitting home and watching it and it just comes up. Oh, you, yeah. All of a sudden, there it is. You yeah. see it played on the network. It was for me, definitely. My best feeling about it was we were playing at a, at a club back home, you know, and the uh, place was full of people. And it came up on a screen and it was just, uh, you know, I looked at me and I said, man, that's us. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Sure it is. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do that, you know? But yeah. it was 
probably that was probably my best feeling about it. Uh, yeah. Japan. Uh, Bobby, you formed this group 13 years ago, right? Yeah. And you're the lead singer and the guitarist. And, and, and Jerry, when did you join? I joined actually in early 88. I was um, about six years ago, I guess. I was yeah. came along. How many of the originals that were, were with you 13 years ago are still there? I have three, well, count myself, three originals that are still with us, myself and Joey and uh, bass player yeah. Brian Jones. And the guys who've left, what are they doing now? Uh, Curtis, Curtis Wright, <coughs> he's real, uh, probably real familiar in Nashville. He's wrote a lot of hit songs for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. was with us like uh, for three, four years, and uh, he's writing hit records. And uh, Good for him. Yeah, and uh, Tony, our drummer, for uh, eight years is... Uh, I think he's, he played with Tanya Tucker, Travis Tritt, and uh, he's now, uh, I think, doing management. He's into the business end of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aubrey, our piano player, uh, is playing with Matthews Wright King and... Uh, Matthews Wright King. Maybe he's got a deal now. He might yeah, be yeah. Matthews Wright King and Hilton. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All six members of the group, and everybody sings, right? Mm -hmm. Sure do. Yeah. Is it, is, it, is it hard, Jerry, to, to play the drums and sing? See, I've always wondered how you can, how you can <laughs> carry the notes when you're hitting the drum and playing that stuff. Well, it, it, it takes, sometimes I don't hit the notes, man. <laughs> and trust me, they let me know. They no, do. What, what's happened was, uh, at, at first, when Aubrey was still with the band, he did quite a few of the parts. And I sang, but not as much as I do now, and I had to take over. So it took some woodshedding on my part mm -hmm. to really, you know, nail the parts. And then I still have struggle yep. with it frequently. But yeah, it, it gets, it just depends on the song. I mean, it's, it would be different. I mean, our steel guitar player, boy, he has a heck of a lot harder of a time you know, trying to play steel guitar and, and sing at the same time. But yeah, it does. It takes some practice. You know, I guess some artists have trouble or, or, or dislike movement or anything when they're singing. I saw Linda Ronstadt doing a sound, or a sound check or a rehearsal for a song she was going to do on the Grammys once years ago. And they had her walking. And at a certain, finally she said, I, I, I don't want to walk and sing at the same time. She chose to, to stand still. I guess I, we've had people here who have sung sitting down and don't like that. They say they We have oh. one woman who said she'd never sung a song sitting down. It's hard to sing sitting down. You can't get air. You get your air, you know. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's weird. Tough. It's yeah. weird. Well, where are you guys touring now? You on a big tour in the middle of one? <coughs> Finishing up club dates, uh, fairs, uh, just whatever we can get, you know, mm -hmm. doing that kind of thing. We're still concentrating yeah. ourselves mainly on the East Coast right now, but yeah. we're talking about going. We've got some, some dates working up out in Colorado and yeah. Texas area, so hopefully we can get out that way real soon. How's the, how's the sound changed or evolved with the group over 13 years? Can, can you tell, if you listen to the early tapes of, of what you did more than a decade ago, can you tell a noticeable difference between then and now? My part, yeah. Uh, Singing-wise, yeah. I've, I've de developed myself over the years of singing in the bar rooms and things. And uh, the, the pickers have always, I've always tried to have the best pickers I could possibly find, you know, for the group. And uh, I guess the picking is stayed pretty much the same. Uh, the styles, when somebody leaves, you try to find somebody that, you know, that is that style, mm -hmm. a person to replace them so it's not that much of a change. Uh, describe the style of the band. It, it, I, what I saw was country rock. Is that pretty good? Yeah, we're kind of up-tempo traditional. They have a word for it. It's neo-traditional. Yeah, it. <laughs> neo in our biography, I think is what it is. It's neo-traditional country music, which I guess you could interpret in many ways, but I would have to say we're really, we try to strive to be high energy. You know, we have a lot of energy in our music, but then again, on our ballads and stuff, we stick more to the real country roots as much as we can. So. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your backgrounds and what you, and your preferences in music from your, from your childhood. Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris from Cimarron, our guests. We'll be back. I guess your love's not through. It used to break my heart. Every time you leave, made me want to cry, moan, beg you, please. Now I just can't let this hurt go on. Honey, tell me why when you say goodbye, can't you just stay gone? Can't you just stay gone? Bobby Smith and Jerry Parrish from the group Cimarron. Both of you are from Virginia. Right, yeah. Is that a coincidence or is that a requirement for the band? <laughs> <laughs> More uh, of a coincidence, I guess. I, I just tried to find everybody that was close to home and we didn't have to, uh, you know, where they could make a living and not have to go back and forth yeah. you know, out, out of town. But we ended up with a lot of folks out of town, you know, while it was, mm. before it was over with. Now you're from, Bobby, you're from up in Roanoke, a very pretty part of the country up in there. Yeah, God's country, yeah. we call it. 
Uh, is that like is that a hotbed of country music? Were you raised on country music? Did you see shows that would come oh, to man. town? My mom was a singer. And, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Grandfathers and just come from a musical family. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to go to the American Theater back before the Civic Centers, you know, were mm -hmm. before people had you know the opportunity to go to Civic Centers. They wouldn't run around, so we went to the local theater and American Theater. Got to see Buck Owens, mm -hmm. uh, Ray Price, the Wilburn Brothers, uh, Carl Smith. Oh yeah. Just, uh, pop. Yeah. So you're, you're country music through and through. Oh, man. Your, mo your mom sang country oh, music. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and Jerry, from what I read about you, you're, uh, you're into uh, George Jones or Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could go from one to the other. No, I, I think what they meant by that is I actually started out playing rock and roll, and I'm, I'm still, I don't know, like metalhead would be the term. I still like that kind of music, because just from a drummer's point of view, because they yeah. do a lot of intricate stuff and that kind of yeah. thing. But I do like it, you know, but... I'm, I like both. I'm really into both both genres of music, I guess. From, from Radford, Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, would, would you, so you were exposed to country music a lot growing oh, up. Oh, yeah. There, My too. mother and father were country music fans from, from the start, and they exposed me to that, you know, but as I grew up. I guess when I got into high school is when I started doing the rock and roll part, mm -hmm. but Mom and Dad took me to, uh, you know, we had a little private club that they belonged to, and we, I used to go out there and watch them bands all the time. Every band came through there was country music, so I got exposed to a lot of country. And I read where you were playing nightclubs at 13 years old. That's yeah, true? that's true. Is that legal? No. no. <laughs> Surprisingly, all the years I played nightclubs, I never never got asked of my age or what. I don't, I don't know why, but I, I mean, the people that own the clubs and all that. Dad used to have to drive me to jobs. I mean, we'd load my drums up in a car and he'd take me to the club. You weren't doing any hard drinking at these nightclubs. No, I was really, I was a Coke addict back then. Coca-Cola, I did. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. When did you get your first drum? Uh, I was actually 12, 12 years old when I got my first kit. And I started playing. Driving the neighbors crazy with drums? Yeah, really. I mean, I had a really supportive neighborhood, though. Because, I mean, because that's true. I mean, our, we was in a subdivision. Our houses were close. and. I played drums, you know, constantly. I come up for school and I played and played and played, and you really could hear it across the neighborhood. But not one of them complained about it. And, and you know, in the past, I've actually went and thanked those people. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sorry I bugged you so many years, but thank you. You know, they. they That's just, true. You got to have a cooperative neighborhood. They did. To, to I, practice was, drums. I was surprised. They really did in my neighborhood. They, there was a lot of players in my neighborhood. Yeah. You know, younger people. Were you doing that, Bobby? Were you hooking up your guitar to amplifiers as a kid and, and driving the neighbors crazy? Well, we used to practice in my basement, and uh, we'd rattle the walls, you know. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad let us practice there, and they've always been real supportive. And uh, it's a little local store out from where I live, you know, and uh, they would come in and say, yeah, y'all have been practicing last night. The walls were shaking out here, you know. <laughs> Knock the products off yeah. the shelf in there. You're all, from what I read, NASCAR nuts. <laughs> and in Virginia, we're talking about Virginia being a hotbed of country music. Boy, here's a hotbed of, of, of auto racing, and, and there's a big Martinsville race coming up. When is it, the 25th? Yeah, I believe that's the 25th. You're all going to be there? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're real lucky about that. We'll all be there, and we'll all be guests of different uh, drivers, our favorite drivers, and I think they're going to let us go to their pits. We're real, real happy about that. Is that what it means when you're a guest? You can, you can go down to the pit area yeah, and visit with them? Yeah, it's been like specially put together for us to be in the pits with mm -hmm. uh, our favorite drivers and, you know, get to be a part of the, the, the racing. Thing wow. Do you, get, do you get to do anything? Well, our steel player, uh, he's on cloud <laughs> nine, Joey McRae. He's got uh, Jeff Bodine as his favorite driver. Yeah. And uh, he gets uh, Jeff Bodine uh, uniform. uniform. Yeah, they sent him in a whole uniform, you know, like they wear in the pit crew. Wow. We're, we're kind of afraid he's going to show up one night playing in the racing Playing with racing Jeff outfit. Bodine outfit on, you know, <laughs> big ball cap and everything. Well, yeah, I'm ready, guys. They ever let you drive the car around? Uh, I don't think they would uh, risk that. I, I kind of doubt that. I've, I mean, we haven't, the thing is, is we're going to get there. It's kind of a press time thing because we're going to be out of town the night before and we're really going to be pressed to get to the place just to be there for that. But I mm -hmm. doubt we'll be able to actually get any, do any driving. But, but you'll be there. Mm -hmm, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. Well, I was, well, I was in the pits once at Darlington years ago. They let me go down to the pit area to, to, to film something. And it was the hottest I've ever been in my, it was 130 degrees. Good gosh. I hope it's not like that. <laughs> I don't think it'll be quite, that's the 25th of this month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it won't be. Sunday after next. I'm Sunday after next, sure. Yeah. Well, you ought to talk them into letting you drive the thing around the, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, around the track. <laughs> Your album you have ded is dedicated to Danny Al Smith, one of the best guys we ever had the privilege of knowing. That's it. Uh, on your album. Who's yeah. Danny uh, Al Smith? Uh, Danny um, was our sound man back in uh, for probably eight, nine years. Maybe, I forget, I guess eight or nine years he was our sound man. And uh, he died, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we just dedicated that to him. That's nice. That's, that's very nice. Did, did, have you had the st same people stay with you in those capacities, the behind-the-scenes people over the 13 years? Or is that, a, is that an area that there's a lot of turnover in? 
basically everybody's still intact. Uh, we put on our manager, Mike Smartak, uh, which got us a record deal with Alpine, and uh, one thing led to another. But other than that, it hadn't been any changes, basically. Let me take one more break. From Cimarron, Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris are here. We'll be right back after this. You got me running like a Detroit diesel. Got me humming like a Detroit diesel. Keep me coming like a Detroit diesel. Like I'm in overdrive. From the country rock group, Cimarron, our guests are Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris. What's the significance, Bobby, of the name Cimarron? Where'd you come up with that? Um... Well, back in 80, I was looking for a, you know, a commercial type name, something that was catchy to the ear, and uh, I was looking to the Webster's Dictionary, you know, and I come across this map, the United States or whatever, and uh, I seen this river, the Cimarron River, mm -hmm. and that's where I got the name from. It, I think it, from like from New Mexico, it starts out and runs all through the west. Yeah. So you named it after the river? Yeah. That's Have you I'm ever right. seen the river? No, sir. But I'm looking forward to going to see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When he yeah. went on vacation, he, he drove across. And he sure did. Drove across the Cimarron River. Well, there you go. It seems like it'd be a very, a, a very, the name. Just <laughs> says it's kind of wide open, kind of like that, you know. You wanted to mention a couple of the guys. You mentioned all the names of the people in the group, but you left out a couple. Is that right? Well, yeah, I left out Joel Duckworth from uh, Collins, Mississippi, and uh, Lee Coon, a guitar player from uh, Langdale, Alabama. Langdale, Alabama. So these are the two that are not from Virginia. Yeah, mm -hmm. we imported them. <laughs> Well, Lee lives up there now, but Joel's actually still commuting. Yeah. This, this is the album on Alpine Label. It's called Cimarron. Available at record stores, I would imagine, most everywhere right now. If you have any problem getting it, call Ernest Tub Record Shop. We can always find them at the Ernest, Ernest Tub, Tub Record. Right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you doing this. Good luck with your touring and with your Thank albums you. and everything. Come back and see us someday. Appreciate you having Thank you. Bobby Smith and Jerry Paris. The group is Cimarron. Also, thanks to H. Jackson Brown for being here tonight to talk about his books. Tomorrow night, the full hour with Michael English. We'll see you then. Now I just can't let this hurt go on. Honey, tell me why. When you say goodbye, can't you just be gone? It used to break my heart every time you'd leave. It made me want to cry. Moan back and bleed. Tell me why when you say